Uh, you know, I'm about business out here. When you see me in this truck, it's about business. It ain't about nothing but that. It ain't it, it ain't nothing personal. It ain't nothing. It's 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 business. People get confidence and cocky, you know, mixed up sometimes. I realize that I am a little bit uh, cocky, but that's because I'm super confident in the things that I take on. I don't take on things that I can't do. So uh, you know, you're rarely gonna find me in a spot where. You know, uh, I'm not confident in in the work world because I don't normally take on work that uh, I don't know how to do, right? Okay, y'all, good morning. Well, it's uh, mid-morning. It rained so hard last night uh, that we decided, well, I decided not to work today. But the job I looked at yesterday, uh, me and her agreed to the money, and uh, she's already checking into a chipper uh, and all that. So uh, me knowing that, I'm gonna be getting that job, and we're not gonna be able to do it this weekend coming up. Uh, well, I got that sod job to do and I got some bamboo uh, site over there to do too So uh, I'm not gonna be able to do it this weekend, but next weekend we will and So what I'm gonna do to kind of help us and you know, I'm not doing anything else Is I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna spray that area that I showed y'all where all those trees are down what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop on one of the lawnmowers here and I'm gonna ride up in there if I can and uh, and just spray everything, the whole area. And that'll knock all this stuff down. So in, you know, 10 days or so when we're over there to do the work, it won't be so overgrown. Uh, I mean, that it's, and that is gonna help us. Well, number one, when the sun comes out and everything starts drying up a little bit, it's gonna damn, and all that all that weed stuff start dying, then the sun will, will uh, be able to reach the ground easier too. And it'll keep down on the bugs and all the, uh, well, the critters, you know, chiggers and all kinds of stuff lives in that kind of thing. Snakes, chiggers, you know, everything, man. So uh, I don't know if you guys ever, uh, I'm gonna get on a lawnmower and I'm gonna put the sprayer on the mower with me just like y'all see me do every day. And I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna spray that whole area knock it down so then come two weeks from now when we're back over there to do the work we won't have to deal with as much uh growth it'll be just trees because the way it is now i'm about to go on there with a damn brush cutter <laughs> to mow it and, and you know she's not you know I'm, i mean i don't want i don't want to have this pace the same so she wants to get the trees up so she told me she'd give me a couple hundred bucks if i come over there and spray so that's what i'm gonna do We'll go over here and spray this real quick. So, you know, right, I'm gonna pull up over here to spray this this uh, this back lot back here. So I'll probably uh, run me a, a, I gotta go down here to that where all that ditch, that ditch is right there. There's a box right there. I'm gonna go and spray that box. That'll help us out. Uh, bow cut around that box when we were here in November. It hasn't been cut around since. So we'll spray that. But if I gotta go down there, right, to the, just to the edge of the grass line, then what I'll do is I'll, I'll go on and and, and, let, and cut this right here. So yeah, that's the old 921. I'm not I'm not gonna uh, I'm not gonna be cutting a lots over here right now. We're just here to to help us out when we do get the job. So <clears throat> when I get over here and I can make you know uh, uh, three grand in a day or a day and a half, then that's uh, uh, that's why I'm doing stuff like this. Because what that does is that makes it where, damn Ray, you only spend an hour and a half at that job, and make two thousand, or you only spent two days over there and you made five grand, and and you know all that. So uh, that's just how you do that. You, you don't do that by just pulling up. You got to do that. I mean, you can, but let's do some preventable stuff to help us with the job. I got a contract on the job, so uh, yeah. So 
and you can't do anything else today right i can't i can't go cut no grass or nothing so let's go on and get this 200 how to fill fill both the trucks up with fuel top them off and uh and probably use that much spray so and i mix it up kind of strong so uh i ain't really got time to hardly kick it man so y'all gonna have to yeah deuces There's a mouth here to go under, uh, it goes under the road for water. I want to try to find that. You look at the ground, it looks like it's like right along. 20 minutes, $10 worth of spray, $200. You know, that ain't bad, man. I'm going to get that, uh, get fuel money. And see that 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 really helps us ways than what you can really quantify. Because if we get over here to, uh, next week and these bees, bee nests, and snakes and ticks and chiggers and all that stuff in that in that in that overgrown stuff, and it's going to be at least ten days before we get back over here. So you kill all that stuff, then then all those bugs and stuff will kind of just they'll go to where there's more green shit, snakes and everything. So. Uh, and you can see i want to be able to see the ground so because the job really is not brush cutting you know <clears throat> though i i mean i may bring a brush cutter with me maybe we can get another day out of her uh doing the tree stuff not going to be that bad if it just what if it wasn't for the freaking uh heat and all because the skid steer can you pick up them trees and feed them into a chipper you know uh, I thought about on this job replacing my chainsaw, you know, my, the, the big chainsaw that I normally use because it's been running like crap and uh, it's not that powerful anymore. I've had it for about 12 years and it's not, you know, it's not, uh, well, it's just not that powerful and we're going to have a lot of cutting over there, but most of that cutting over there you can do with the 201 feet and I got three of them. So uh, we need to get that other saw out of out of the toolbox on that other truck and get that saw up and running good. Where uh, I don't like guys using my saw. I mean, I, I don't mind them using the business saw, but the saw that I designate as mine, I don't like got nobody to use it but me. Some guys don't think nothing about. Oh well, you just have to replace the chain, man. Shoot, that's good. But I, I, uh -uh. I ain't trying to replace no chain on nothing. And it wouldn't want to do, dog. So, but this is this was a smart thing to do right here. It's going to pay dividends. It paid today, but it's also going to pay on our timing. And at the end of the day, that's money. That's money. So we don't have to be over there with a freaking brush cutter, you know, uh, brush cutting everything before we can even get started. I want to be able to see the ground. I want the ground to get good and dry too. So, uh, yeah, anyway, so I'm going to stop, I'm going to pull off, uh, pull off the road up here and I'm going to call this guy out in Luthersville that, that, that well, I, he, 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 he called me about two weeks ago and says, uh, can you come out in Luthersville? And I'm like, sure. I said, brush cut. Is that, I'm like, sure. Yeah. Let's get still work, blah, blah, blah. He's like, okay, uh, let me talk to my father-in-law and uh, I'll get back with you. So, so I didn't think nothing else about it, right? So then a week later, not even a week later, uh, you know, midweek last week, week last week, uh, he called me and uh, we talked, he gave me the address. He, yeah, uh, apparently they couldn't find, you know, I don't know, maybe they couldn't find nobody else. I don't know. I'm gonna try to call him. So let's try to call him and see if I can, because I, I, it'd be nice to be able to go out there now you know, while I'm out. Hi, hello, this is Ray the Landscaper. How you doing?
you see they answered they didn't realize who it was and then they now they realize who it was and now they don't want to talk so that and that tells me a lot right i'm just saying that when you know people are gung-ho about things and then he called me and wanted me to come uh come look at it and i told him i would try to come over the weekend uh but then i i called him saturday morning no answer uh i texted him sunday morning no answer uh and this is after he called me i'm not you know i'm not running him down i'm trying to figure out a time to go out there and look at it because this is about a 20 minute drive but me and me and the uh the young lady that i'm uh fixing to do the work for while i sprayed just now uh she's texting me and, and we're all good with everything so It's going to be a, a decent paying job, but it, it, you know, it ain't going to be, you know, like taking down that big tree where we made, you know, $1,900 in four hours or whatever. It ain't going to be like that, but I can profit a thousand dollars a day off the job. So, and that's after fuel and labor. If I can do that, I'm good, man. And a day is six hours about. The biggest thing too that you got to think about when you're talking about the money and you're talking about dealing with uh, the customers and all, one of the bigger things that a lot of guys don't think about or don't, at least they don't display it in a video or whatever, is is the longevity of the customer and the re repetitive work from the same customer. You know, sometimes you know you can go in and do a job a, a little bit cheaper if they're going to give you a high volume of work. So I know what they're trying to do over there because the, the wife and the husband, we had an hour long conversation when I met, met them out there in November. So the wife and the husband, he's, uh, they're wanting to put grass back there in that area with the tree. But it's a process, you know. They really screwed up by letting their friend cut the trees down. Y'all saw the trees, man. I mean, I, I could have grabbed them tree stumps and all and picked them up and uh you know at least put them in a pile somewhere instead of them just laying around everywhere because that you know that that's that's not good right there i mean that was a bad move on on i mean okay you got them cut for free but <laughs> i mean is it probably going to end up costing you more i'm for real because now, she's gonna have to have a stump grinder over there probably on some of the other ones. Some of the ones that are big that are gonna be real taxing for me to dig out. See, if she'd have called me, she could have rented the chipper and I could have took the trees down and chipped them all in one weekend, see? And you wouldn't have never had this mess. I wouldn't have had the process of spraying. I wouldn't have had the process of the unknown, right? You know? So. There's a lot of cleanup over there too that you're gonna have to do. As I was walking through there, I don't know if the camera got me walking, but I walked through there, uh, got off the mower and walked through there spraying some of the stuff toward the wood line. And the ground is covered with big pieces of freaking tree stuff. You know, I'm talking about pieces, you know, as big as my hand, you know. That's not really a chip, <laughs> it's a chunk. So, but see, this is the second job I've done, done for her, for them. And I'm dealing with her because her husband's a pilot or whatever, but this is the second job I've done for them. So at the end of the day, you, you build trust up by doing work for them. And the first time I was over there, that's when my brush cutter, my older brush cutter broke, remember? And I, I had, I couldn't finish. And I had to go back and finish, you know, I had to go buy another brush cutter and finish. I had to put her off for a couple of days. Uh, but see, see what, uh, what she sees is a contractor that uh, does what he says he's gonna do. I'm trying to beat her, I don't have to beat her. You know, that, you know, that had, a, that had something broke over there on his machine. He, he, didn't, he wasn't trying to get money out of him or nothing and something broke. Uh, he went and had it fixed came back and finished the job and, and you know and, and then 
you know, then did a little bit of extra stuff over there too, and I did, because I had that new cutter, right? So I was wanting to try some stuff out while I was over there. So I went across the street over there and went down to their pond, down to that pond and uh, grinded up some, uh, you know, some saplings and stuff. Just, you know, I didn't think of it as extra. I wasn't trying to charge her. I was just trying to get a feel for the new cutter. You know, so. But see, a customer, you got to look at it from their point of view. Their point of view is all those things that can go wrong damn near went wrong. <laughs> you know, well, he couldn't finish. The machine broke down. Uh, but he was right back over here. You know, he told me when he was coming back and, and all that. And, you know, when the contractor tells you that and you do that, you're gold, man. You're gold. There, she's not, you know, she, that's probably why she called me back. <laughs> the reason she called me back was the fact that, well, we do good work, right? And we got the equipment, but we do what we say we're going to do, even if it costs more. Like, you know, cheaper ain't always better. I'm telling you, it ain't. And when she knows I got the equipment, she knows I got the know-how, and she knows that I know the lay of the land back there, that it would not even be smart of her to go with somebody else, even if they were doing it for half, half of what I'm doing it for. Of course, I know ain't nobody gonna do all that. For, I ain't saying I won't take the skid steer out for $600 because I will. What I'm saying is that I won't commit to a daily rate for $600. But you got to build relationships uh, with people. And they're a young couple. I think I even talked about it in the video back in November when I first went over there. They're a young couple. They just bought this house. They, they This is their their uh, their dream home. They got their kids. They're raising their kids, you know. And, you know, you, you want people like that. And then once you, once they trust you, it's, up, it, it, it's, it's on you to screw that up. I just happen not to ever screw it up. Because I'm not a greedy uh, kind of guy. I'm not needy. So, you know, I, I never screw up the relationships with my customers unless it's something that uh, where they're playing games with my livelihood or, or something like that. Uh, but with skid steer work, it's, it's imperative to get the same customers if you can. Of course, you're not going to get as much repetitive, repetitive customers with skid steer work as you do with lawn maintenance. And that's one of the reasons why I love the lawn maintenance so much. Because it's repetitive. And it kind of keeps you at bay, keeps you at bay, right? Keeps you at bay. Lawn maintenance will keep you at bay, keep you at bay, keep you out here. And then, and then as soon as you see a damn, you know, an opening, you're making money. And as soon as you see an opening in your time, you reach out and you snatch some skid steer work and make a couple thousand. And then you back up and you go back to the lawn care, lawn care, lawn care, lawn As soon as you're sassy enough, you create a little, t a little more time, and then, whop, you go in there and grab another $2,000 skid steer job. And you ain't lost an air dollar on the lawn maintenance. That is what I pride myself on, y'all. <laughs> That's what I'm good at. And I can't think of any customer that I've had over the years uh, that... that I lost the relationship with that I wanted the relationship with, right? And that's what this business is, this relationship building 101. Uh, now, if you're, you know, a big, big outfit, then, you know, it might not be so much. But, but for me and in my foreseeable future, it's all about relationship building. Uh, and... I don't really have to do a lot for that. I just have to do what I say. And I have to be believable. And to be believable, well, you gotta convince sometimes. And if you're if you're shady, it's gonna it's hard to convince people because, well, if you're shady, that means you ain't you ain't you ain't you ain't relationship building, you trying to beat somebody or you trying to get something for damn near nothing or whatever. 
I want, I guess, I guess at the end of the day, I want to get money from you, but I also want to make sure that you're happy with it and with the work, even if it is expensive. And I also want to make sure that uh, moving forward, we can do another job for you if it comes up. It's the same concept as a lawn maintenance. It's just bigger money, but you can do bigger stuff. You know, it's not. Not rocket science or nothing. It's just well for me, it, it's just being me, and that's what I was telling you guys the other day. For some reason, and I'm grateful and thankful. For some reason, um, people tend to trust me. I don't know. Uh, I have no ulterior motive, and I'll tell a customer real quick. Uh, you know, I got to make a living out here, and to me, customers respect that. Might not care about it all the time, some people, and, and when the customers that I have don't care if I make a living or not, they're usually not gonna be my customer, especially with the lawn maintenance where they're, where they're, where they're holding me up. They're holding up, you know, um, my money, my time, and, and, my, and everything, where they're crying too much, they're taxing my brain. And of course, you gotta have good customer service, like I did when I did that brush cutting job, uh, last year and she even tried to pay me when my brush cutter broke down over there back to the job that I just sprayed when my brush cutter broke down over there back in November maybe I'll put a link to the videos up. when my brush cutter broke down over there she offered to pay me you know uh, half a day based on you know how long I've been there and uh, I've told her no I told her I didn't. I, I said no. Let's let's uh, let's wait till the job's done because I didn't know how long it was going to be before I could get back over there or nothing. I mean, I, you know, uh, you see, when a customer tries to pay you uh, prematurely and you don't take the money uh, because well you're not done or whatever and y'all haven't talked about that. You know, in some some jobs, if I got to come out of my pocket a lot, and I feel a certain type of way, then I'm gonna add, I'm gonna get some money down to pay for the, whatever materials I got to buy. It's just according to how I feel about that customer. That's up to me. There's not a rule one way or the other. It's whatever I feel like at that moment. And that might be wishy-washy to a lot of guys, but that's me. I got to have a feeling. I don't let the guys that work with me uh, accept jobs uh, and. And sell the sell any services and 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 talk about the money. I want to I want to be the one to deal with them about the money because I feel like uh, based on my experience and everything and 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 the way I'm built, I can get the most money out of them for what we're doing and I can keep the expectations to where they are in line with what it takes to make that money. And then I then I can look at. At, at facial expressions and that kind of thing when I'm meeting with people and tell if they are uh, you know gonna be spending good money or not the guys that work for me and I don't know about Toby but guys in the past that work for me they they they're they're, they're thinking about what well, God knows whatever they're not thinking about you know uh, what it's gonna take to do the job and that's one bad thing about letting guys know how much you make, you know, have an open book, if you will, because they say, well, we did this job over here for, for, you know, a thousand dollars and, and this job over there, and this job right here, you're going to charge 1500 for, it? or you're going to charge a thousand, uh, you know, 700 for it? or whatever. Right. Because I know that I could probably get that money out of them. And I know the logistics of everything, getting the, the machine to the job, getting it set up, uh, uh, maneuverability on the job, uh, how far it is from my house, uh, what attachments I need to bring. See, all those things are things that I, that I calculate in my, in my head while I, I mean, within, a, within a five seconds. And those are all determining factors on what I charge to do Bobcat work. And then at the end of the day, <laughs> and I hate to say it so bluntly to every, to everybody, to folks that are business people uh, I charge whatever I want to charge at the end of the day <laughs> I mean because it's my machine it's my truck it's my trailer you know it's it's I own everything so I have the right to charge they agreed to that's what they agreed to 
I get to try, but when you, when I say that, and that sounds, well, damn, Ray, you know, but when I say that, the caveat is you better make sure you're making enough to pay your bills, and you better make sure that you're uh, nurturing enough relationships to keep things going, and that's the important part. It ain't about, you know, every little dollar that I make. I mean, it is to a certain degree, but it's about making every little dollar you can make today and then and then repeating that again next week next month next week so uh, and then doing the same thing over and over again and getting faster and more efficient at it to where now that yard that was taking us an hour and a half to do for 150 or whatever now we're doing in less than an hour for the same 150 i don't go down on the number if it's a lawn so just that's just some thoughts y'all uh not that you know i'm i'm any i'm not a, a business guru or or nothing like that i'm just you know out here you know observing right and learning from the moves that i make and then trying to explain it to you guys without sounding i don't know arrogant cocky or whatever everybody seems to always think i am People get confidence and cocky, you know, mixed up sometimes. I realize that I am a little bit uh, cocky, but that's because I'm super confident in the things that I take on. I don't take on things that I can't do. So, uh, you know, you're rarely going to find me in a spot where, you know, uh, I'm not confident in, in the work world because I don't normally take on work that, I don't know how to do, right? It's just some food for thought today. Uh, we're not working, uh, and you know, and I'm uh, and I'm I'm steady. I'm still working. This is this is all work. Going and spraying that one, calling the stupid people that don't want to answer the phone, uh, moving everything from yesterday from today to tomorrow, and then and then trying to incorporate uh, Wednesday schedule. Because if we didn't work today, right, then we got a block of we got a block of yards, maybe ten, that we put to tomorrow. Well, tomorrow we already had ten or so that you know that that's on that route. So now we're we're, we're gonna we're gonna have to try to we're gonna be a little more inefficient this week than what I thought because we missed today. But we did work yesterday, and we did uh, four. Of the ones that was on today so there's like eight left from today that we had to push to tomorrow so but me and Toby are gangsters out here I mean we I mean it ain't even I mean it ain't even close man I mean we <laughs> we we get a lot of work done based on, on based on my experience and based on uh, uh, from what I've had in the past as far as help and everything goes. I've had two guys out here and we don't get as much work done as me and Toby can do on a good day. Of course, when I have two guys out here, I ain't gotta do as much. So I'm having to do a little more work and that's okay with me. I, I mean, uh, I, I don't mind really, I, I really don't. Uh, I understand that that's just where we're at right now. And I, I, I take one for the team. I mean, I haven't taken one for the team the whole time I've been in business. Any time that I could uh, not have to do some of the labor myself, and that's what I that's what I do. But uh, I knew when I hired just one guy that what we're trying to do is basically set the groundwork down to be able to hire other people, and me not have to have so much interaction with the other people. I mean, I'm, of course, I'm going to have to have some interaction, uh, but the first thing we needed to do, Toby and I, when I hired Toby, is we need to get him as familiar with the properties as he can get in one season. I know the people out here, as they come out here in one season, they know everything. Well, you tell yourself that, but, you know... I've been out here 17 seasons and I don't know everything. So, but I know a lot. 
and uh, I know, um, and, 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 and a lot of you guys can simply tell that by the methodical way I do things a lot of times, by the patience that I have when it comes to pre preparing things. You know, just right off the cuff, uh, you know, preparing that job for two weeks from now today. That's just one thing. What about, you know, buying the, buying the second F-250, uh, you know, in the middle of the winter, you know? Uh, because without that, we don't have, I don't have, I, I'm not able to hire a guy. And, and I bought that truck before I even knew Toby. Didn't even know who, I didn't even know him. And a lot of, and then buying lawnmowers and, you know, buying a skid steer and, and the, the, all the things that I'm in control of, you know, to make the business as successful as it can be based on the time that we're working, you know? And uh, there's a deeper plan in place. Uh, I want, like, it's like I've told Toby, basically what I want to do is I want to get him to where he's running all the lawn care, the help and everything. If, if, if we're going to go that route, let's go that route where I can uh, fill in as needed and uh, we hire somebody else. But see, he's kind of like me. He gets somebody out here in the truck with him that he don't want to be around or that, you know, that ain't with it, then it's going to slow him up, cost him money, cost him time. And he's like, do that, man. I just rather do it myself. That's how he is. So. And that's kind of, you know, I, like, you know, I had Jared out here, but we soon realized that and it, that Jared didn't know anything. And then we, we we started doing the properties and we're like, damn, dude, this really ain't that bad for us just to, to do them all ourselves, just him and I. And then the drought hit. So, but we're good. We're making money every day and we're, we're okay. And I'm just, you know, uh, thinking in terms of okay the winter and next year so and, and and you know toby's on board you know you never know somebody's on board by what they say you know i mean all the guys i've had out here i've had a hundred of them tell me hell yeah man this is a sweet gig uh we can i, I I'll, I'll be out here with you tight until the day i die so where they at right right so when guys come out here and they tell me yeah 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 you know i you know you, i mean i'm the gunshot i'm, I'm like mm -hmm, you know we'll see that damn 90 degree heating 100 degree heat ain't got on your ass yet <laughs> so you know it's it's so of course toby was telling me all the good thing all the right things when he came on but he's showing that he's demonstrating that and at the end of the day, he can make a lot of money out here. Now, this year, first year out here, he, he, he ain't going to make a fortune. Uh, but he ain't going to miss a meal. But the longer he's out here and the more I trust his judgment, the more I'm going to let him do and the more money I'm going to let go of. I don't, you know, I don't mind paying guys good. I want to pay them good. I want everybody to get paid. But usually to get paid good, consistently, you got to go through some shit. Just like I have to go through some stuff. You know, for me to get to, to where I'm in a position to have all these customers, have all this equipment, you know, have a building and, and, and you know, building one block at a time over 17 years, you know, I've been through a lot, and uh, to get here, and I ain't, and I could go. Uh, I need to go a lot. I need to. I need to do a lot more. So, my one of my this is this is back to what I was spraying. One of my biggest things with that spray today is I hope it don't rain anymore. They was calling like a 30% chance, but I had to go on a spray. But see, I don't have time to do that tomorrow with well, the rest of this week. And that spray needs to sit on there for a while. If it can just sit on there for a couple of hours before it rains, we're good. Because I sprayed it. I sprayed it hardcore. But we'll see. I got to go in here and uh, 